Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. I've often said that you should follow me on Twitter. I post a lot of things that I believe is newsworthy that mainstream media does not tell you about that is now and will in the future impact your lives, your children's lives. Yeah, in so many aspects, it's, it's, it's frightening. I'm going to cover the economy and what's coming with the economy and the coming world war. Anytime the economy goes belly up, yeah, they start a war. The information I'm going to give you is very important, so please share. Today is March 25th, 2023, and this is what I posted the first thing this morning. It says, I marched to my own beat. What's trending? Who really cares? I have always marched to my own beat. I don't follow trends. I don't follow fashions. I tell my children, you can be poor. That might be your destiny or lot in life, but you can be poor, but not stupid. I've never been one to go out and get my um, hair done or keep up with the latest high dollar fashions or um, weekly or monthly visits to get your nails done. The most important things, I believe, is having a roof over your head, food on the table, food stocked up, um, energy to have heat, some sort of power. Yeah, all the basics. I didn't care um, if my car is probably over 20 years old. Yeah, my clothes are what I enjoy and are comfortable to wear and a way to defend and protect what I have, protect my children, to pe protect my property, etc. What's coming too, if we don't stand up for ourselves, is our loss of freedom. Uh, all these banks that invested in treasury bonds are underwater. They are not secure. They are not safe, no matter what they tell you. I have heard that the uh, $250,000, that is the maximum where our savings in our bank accounts is secured by the uh, FDIC, I believe it is. Actually, they only have one cent to every dollar where they can pay back people if there's a run on your bank. This is uh, Bank of America stock when it closed on Friday. So what the U.S. government is doing, the U.S. Treasury is just printing out more money. Uh, to shore up these banks. Other governments are doing the same thing, printing out more money to keep the banks going, a last-ditch effort, what they're doing. This here is the Western Alliance Bank Corp stock as of Friday. Here is the First Republic Bank stock. Yep, as of Friday, that was only yesterday. Look how it dropped. Here we have First Interstate Bank. Uh, ban system, it says, incorporated. Here's an article on Reuters about Deutsche Bank. UBS hits as bank fear sparks stress signals. European banking stocks fell sharply on Friday, with Deutsche Bank and UBS knocked by worries that actions by regulators, and it continues. Shares of Germany's largest bank, Deutsche Bank, plunged Friday as investors fretted that regulators and central banks have yet to contain the worst shock in the sector since the 2008 global financial crisis. We're probably heading for a global depression. That's my opinion. Wider indicators of financial market stress were also flashing, with the euro falling against the dollar. Eurozone government bond yields sinking and the costs of insuring against banks' defaults surging despite assurance from policymakers that the global banking system is safe. In the latest effort to reassure investors, the U.S. Treasury and the Financial Stability Oversight Council, which comprises the heads of various U.S. regulators, agreed at the meeting Friday that the U.S. banking system is sound and resilient. 
The meeting was chaired by U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, whose comments are being closely watched by markets for an indication of how far, how far are authorities willing to go to shore up the banking sector after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank earlier this month. Germany's Dish Bank was thrust into the investor spotlight and slumped 8.5% alongside a sharp jump in the cost of insuring its bonds against the risk of default. The index of top European bank shares ended down 3.8%. European Bank's Additional Tier Debt A $275 billion market of bonds that can be written off during rescues to prevent the cost of bailouts falling onto taxpayers also came under further selling pressure. As part of the deal with UBS, the Swiss regulatory determined that Credit Suisse ATI bonds with the nominal value of $17.5 billion would be wiped out, stunning global credit markets. That's a lot of people not getting paid for their goods and services that were, you know, sold going down, trickling down through the market. In a bid to show that it has Apple capital while keeping fund costs in check, Italy's UniCredit is leaning towards repaying a perpetual bond at the earliest opportunity in June. Take note of that. June. June or July is when they want to bring in the CBDC. It will be an international world um, banking card. More than likely backed by the IMF, International Financial Market, I think that stands for. But even that is not going to save people from what's coming. Here it says over $95 billion in market value wiped out in two weeks. All these elements, which is what UBS shareholders bought into, are gone. Likely for years, it said. Probably forever. I also posted how Credit Suisse memorabilia up for grabs in online shops after merger. Within hours of its state-backed takeover by UBS, memorabilia bearing the credit lender Credit Suzy's name and logo was being put up for sale in Switzerland, marking the end of an era. Dozens of gold stamped with the name of the issuer the 160-year-old Credit Suisse were uploaded to the country's most popular online marketplace, Ricardo.ch, and Tutti.ch. Corporate memorabilia from recently failed Silicon Valley Bank is also providing popular online, as is merchandise linked to the Lehman Brothers, which filed bankruptcy. Um, at the height of the 2008 financial crisis. Gold currently is at $1,980. I certainly cannot afford to buy any gold. I do have scrap gold that might be worth something. My gold is in prepper supplies. There has been some dire predictions for what's coming where 90% of the world's population is going to end up in poverty. 90%. And people cannot eat gold and silver, so I'll probably barter uh, for gold and silver to give them, you know, what food rations I have put up. One analysis who I have great respect for said the gold prices are probably going to go as high as $15,000 an ounce when the crash happens. That, of course, is going to be when the only thing your money is going to be worth is either to start a fire or to use as toilet paper. More than likely, the uh, tomato plants that I've recently started are going to be grown indoors because I don't want to lose them to uh, starving people. I have told you guys how I've put up extra bags of rice for bartering, how I've taken raw eggs and uh, frozen them. I take the eggs out of the shell. I put, put them in a um, cupcake holder to make cupcakes. Put the cupcake holders in a, um, a, a tin to make cupcakes in. Put the egg in the uh, cupcake paper holder. 
put it in the freezer. Then once they're frozen, I take them out and put them in zip lock bags. We'll probably have war on three different fronts. We're going to have it on Russia, China, and probably Iran. China's uh, economy has gone belly up also. Uh, the export of goods, the shutdown of factories is tremendous. Um, China recently uh, instilled their draft. Uh, there was a call up of everybody over the age of 18 to register for the draft for their coming war. Uh, not, not only with the United States, but also Taiwan. Here's an image of a Grumman C2 Greyhound. Uh, it's a twin engine, high wing cargo aircraft carrier, or aircraft, excuse me, designed to carry supplies, mail, and passengers to and from aircraft carriers. This was off the uh, east coast of the United States this morning. There was reports of three doomsday U.S. planes, two flying over the U.S. and one over Europe yesterday. That plane was flying to a re um, replenishment vessel. It's what's called an oiler. And I was really surprised that it's actually manned by civilians. I don't know if it's still part of the 5th Fleet as a uh, oiler, as they call it. Um, but it used to be part of the 5th Fleet. I found an article about this vessel, USNS Joshua Humphrey. Now, this article was from 2021. It says the uh, USNS Joshua Humphrey is currently filling the role as a military sea lift command Atlantic duty oiler, which means the ship has been providing logistic support for all of the U.S. Navy's ships operations off the east coast of the U.S. in the Atlantic Ocean. There was another Twitter post. Um, I believe this is yes. No, the 23rd. Sea base X-band radar. A floating self-propelled mobile active electronically scanned array early warning radar station station leaving Pearl Harbor under tow on uh, March 23rd. Yeah, it's like on an oil platform, this huge array. There's another image of it. Evidently, back in 2021, the CDC started working with uh, medical facilities, hospitals, doctor offices, things like that, for a unvaccinated code. They were also uh, coding people who were only partially vaccinated. You might want to watch this. That's going to lead me into the CBDC, the uh, digital currency that they're going to uh, force upon everyone to try and save the system, but it's not going to. That's my thought. I don't think it's going to save anything. I think they want to implement this either in June or July. We'll just have to wait and see. Emerging Central Bank Digital Currency Cross-Border Transaction Technology could transform the global economy by providing faster, cheaper, and safer services for many of its players. But banks may not fare well in this new economy, Moody's Investor Service said in a report dated March 21st. Issues such as anti-money laundering, sanctions, and privacy would require a legal and regulatory framework and support for CBDCs is not universal. A United States CBDC faces opposition from some lawmakers because of privacy concerns. Direct exchange of currencies could also reduce the role of the U.S. dollar in the world economy, which does not add to its appeal in Congress. You know, we're set up on that fiat system. Moody downgrades the entire banking sector. Moody's Investor Services cut its outlook for the entire U.S. banking sector. Like I said, when they raise interest rates, uh, that made the Treasury notes that many of these banks bought into, I think just about all of them, um, yeah, they lost money. They're underwater. Uh, let's see. The place, six banks on review for potential credit downgrades in the wake of the collapse of SVB. Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Moody's downgrading of the U.S. banking sector to negative on March 14th 
It has examined the potential disruption effects of CBDC on commercial banking before. This here is Moody's announcement. CBDCs are inherently disruptive to financial institutions and would heighten disintermediation risk raising fund costs. CBDCs would enable broader use of risk-free, likely cheaper instant payments while allowing for innovation through new technologies. You wouldn't be able to pay cash for anything. Um, they postponed uh, where anytime you make a purchase of over $600, you have to report it to um, you know, the government so they can collect the taxes on it. So anything you want to purchase under the table without the government knowing about it, um, yeah, they're going to make it virtually impossible to do that. Yeah, anything you have, yeah, the government wants to collect taxes on it. This is where bartering and selling for maybe gold or silver, especially if it rises even higher than what it is, uh, say, okay, I'll give you a bag of rice for so much of gold or silver for so much of silver. Yeah, and hang on to it. Like I said, supposedly it's going to go all the way up to $15,000 an ounce. I can't purchase gold or silver right now um, with my income, but I can put up food, medical supplies, yeah, beans, bullets, things like that. Another way you're going to lose your freedoms is attached to your personal background, I guess you can call it to your bank account is your ESG score. Yeah, they, they're not talking about that either. In many cases, people are generally unaware that they even have an ESG score unless they come across it in the process of doing something totally unrelated. For example, consumers who have accounts with Merrill Lynch will be able to view their score, whatever that might be. While it may sound like tales out of a China, it is a system that is in fact being implemented in the United States and soon in many other countries. Lenders will use this system to choose who they extend services or credit. The main reason is that companies including lenders are being graded according to the ESG standards themselves. Their businesses and property depend directly on their hiring practices gender diversity, social and environmental impact, and other ESG factors. As they are required to prove their case, they will also need to show that their clients meet the standards at, um, they are being graded. People have credit scores that tell lenders and other parties if they can pay their debts. It is similar to a credit score when it comes to an individual ESG score, but instead of rating credit worthiness, it ranks a person's ESG risk. This is socialism. This is communism. The economy for the common good strives towards an ethical market economy designed to increase the quality of life for all, rather than to increase the wealth of just a few. The ECG promotes the values of human dignity, human rights, and ecological responsibility in the day-to-day -day business practice. Have you heard about the 15-minute cities? The matrix provides the basis for companies to create a common good balance sheet. The common good report then describes how a company has implemented these universal values and looks at areas in need of improvement. It offsets higher costs resulting from ethical, social, and e ecological activities. Common good companies should benefit from the advantages in taxation, bank loans, and public grants and contracts. Limiting wealth inequalities increases the chances for equal participation of all in economic and political life. In Europe, Economy for the Common Good, ECG, is taking a similar tack. The program, which is the brainchild of Austrian publisher and activist Christian Felber, seeks to address a capitalistic system that, in its words, creates a number of serious problems, unemployment, inequality, poverty, exclusion, hunger, 
environmental degradation, and climate change. The solution, ECG argues, is an economic system that places human beings and all living entities at the center of economic activity. In other words, this is an economy that rewards economic stakeholders for behaving and organizing themselves in a humane, cooperative, ecological, and democratic way, or as Felber puts it, an economy that replaces the selfish values of predatory capitalism with the relationship value and constitutional values that underline most moral systems. If taken to its logical conclusion, this vision would be world-changing, and the organization lists 20 ambitions, utopia principles, that it hopes to promote, including income caps, significant limitations on private wealth, and a move to naturalize natural resources, nationalize, um, in the short range, however, ECG activities are far more pragmatic. It has created the Common Good Balance Sheet, a scorecard that, scorecard that measures companies based on their preservation of those five fun, fundamental values. It's still favoritism. Companies with a large number of seedlings would call, qualify for tax breaks and low interest loans and would be given preference when it comes to public purchasing and government contracts. So, according to your ECG score, you might not be able to purchase that car. They're going to tell you what kind of car you can buy. More than likely, it's only going to be electric. Tell you where you can travel to, how much you can travel. Um, be forced to live in their 15-minute city which to me has a ringing of the movie Hunger Games. In the Spanish city of Barcelona has been experimenting with the so-called super rallies or super districts. The concept takes several housing blocks and put them into a super block. Only residents or delivery services have access with their car and the maximum speed limit is six miles per hour. Many streets are blocked for cars and are instead being used in a different way. Former parking lots have been given over to trees, vegetables, and flowers, and are now places where children can play and people can wall away their time on benches in the shade. 15-minute city concept different for every place. In order for as many people as possible to benefit from changing cities and to avoid any new imbalance and gentrification, Experts highlight the need to roll out the concept, let me bring this over, across different districts. Let's see, District 19, uh, yeah, Hunger Games, and ensure those taking part have a good social mix. Why do some dislike the concept of the 15-minute city? Um, it can be suffocating and actually increase isolation. In a 2021 blog post on the London School of Economics website, Edward Glasher, an urban economics at Harvard, writes that the 15-minute city is an enclave, a ghetto, a subdivision. He argues that the concept prevents city from functioning, functioning as engines of opportunity and limits people from different backgrounds, from cross paths. Its good aspects should be embraced, he writes, including accessibility and driving less, but buried the idea of the city that it chopped up into 15-minute bits. The uh, new, new, sorry, sorry. The WashingtonPost.com had an article about 15-minute cities aren't a threat to your civil liberties. Well, what if you don't like the doctor that's within your 15-minute city, or there isn't a job that you enjoy doing, um, or, you know, yeah, for whatever reason, within your 15-minute city. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Like I said, I'm on Twitter, and you can also support my work on Patreon. And as always, be prepared. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later.
God bless y'all. Bye. Thank you.